Hey everybody, welcome to Surface Level, curious conversations about the Black and queer experience. I'm one of your hosts, Jordan, and today, Damon, Tony, and I are closing out season eight by answering questions directly from you, our Surface Level insiders. How old is too old? And how young is too young? Dating, I would say younger, minus five, older, plus 10, but then also always open to surprises. I think there's some, you know, 25 year olds that are just incredibly too young. But for hookups, yeah, like we can, we can- But I train you. You can suck this dick. (laughs) How does it feel to be that bitch? (laughs) I like being that bitch. I'm gonna take that and I'll receive that because if you don't hold yourself up, who else will? Are y'all open to dating one of your viewers? (laughs) Asking for a friend. I'll go on a date, where we going? You going on a date, why not? Like, was it a date or was it just coffee? Don't get me started. (laughs) (laughs) I've shown up to so many coffee. And then found out that it was a fucking date. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. What are you curious about? I told Tony I wasn't gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> this is Beyond the Surface Level Eight. Eight. Ooh. You hear how that went? <laughs> Beyond the Surface Level Eight. Eight times around. And did the sun? I know. It's, it's wow, right? Back. Season eight. Eight this season up. Yeah. Okay. No. What they said? Seventy-two. The square root of seventy-two. <laughs> right. Eight. <laughs> No, I don't is think it? that's right, Tony. Square root of is it 64? 84. I think Square it, root of 64. What's eight times eight? It's 64. 64. So square, square root of 64. 64. <laughs> eight. <laughs> 72. I'm like, I don't think two numbers. 72 is a nice round number. Well, they said it's 2024. Two plus zero plus two plus four equals what? You know I'm not a math girl. I'm assuming it has to be eight. It's eight. <laughs> I am a math girl. Two plus four plus twenty is like, well, hold on now. No, hold on, 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 hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You repeat the question. <laughs> all right. Well, um, you know, this season was all about reflection. Mm-hmm. We every episode was paying homage to a, a black queer icon, living or has left us, who's left a great legacy on our community and just broader society, and so. In the spirit of reflection, oh. I want to play a superlative game with you all. I don't like all. that she starts smiling at me. <laughs> I'm excited. I think it's fun because we're not doing superlatives of today. Mm-hmm. We are doing superlatives as if we were back to those tender years of being in our early 20s. Oh. Think about when we were <laughs> think about when we were 22, oh. where Demond had left Boston and <laughs> came to New York. We were all three in New York City, and we were running amok around New York City. <laughs> I miss um, those days. Okay. Yeah, those days were, you know, quite, those were, I don't want to say that's like the golden days, but they were definitely. There were a moment in time. There was. One moment in time. I mean, that, was, <laughs> that was the renaissance. I mean, <laughs> early 20s is like. I the think roaring the, 20s. They was, were roaring. <laughs> I had a lot of energy. Okay. And we did. We, we definitely did. We definitely <laughs> did. So I'm going to present some superlatives. I want mm-hmm. you all to reflect back on that time of our lives. And each superlative is going to kind of re- relate to some of the topics that we discussed. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So the first one, we talked about um, coming out as a scam mm-hmm. and the fact that oversharing may be something that we all experience. And we talked about AI and technology and how we're so reliant on technology. Mm-hmm. Reflecting on our early 20s, who was most likely to be the quickest person to share their relationship on Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> on oh, I was like, we're going back. We're going back. We're thinking back to the old. Instagram way. started in 2010. Okay, we're talking about 2012. I'm gonna say Demon. Me? Yeah, I would say Demon too. Because I wasn't really Demon. Was I wasn't a in a relationship. Girl. First, well, not yeah. yeah, you're a relationship girl. You do activities. Was I in a relationship? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We can call that. A You've relationship. always been in a relationship, no, back to back to back. And no. even when, and even when we didn't know you was in a relationship, you was living, you was playing house with somebody. <laughs> 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 Said, well, she's she's cooking, she's cleaning. Okay. <laughs> I could only I mean, imagine what's going on in the bedroom. Okay. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> so we can see that that, that that's the sure. Moment. All right. So we've had. Um, quite a few episodes where we talked about gender expression, beautiful gowns, talked about gender expression through clothing. And then we also talked about the risk it takes to bloom Mm -hmm. and gender identity. Reflecting back on our early 20s, who was most likely to bag the femme queen at a (laughs) club? Oh, I think that's me. 
Bag the femme queen. Bag the femme the fem queen. Who was most likely? I don't know. Because we, we was all spitting game back in our early 20s. <laughs> I don't want to say Jordan because I oh. felt like she wasn't along for, for far enough of her journey to be chasing the femme girl. I not, was, that she, not, that she, not that she was chasing them, but that I was, I would they were chasing me too. Her. Chasing Jordan. <laughs> 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 I, would, I would definitely say me too. Yeah. Like I was definitely, you know, all up on, especially if they was, you know, a little shorter mm-hmm. into that. You just got, Jordan had, there was an agenda. It was given tonight. I'm leaving here with something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving here with something tonight. Wait, when you say femme queen, yeah. do you mean femme queen? I just mean like some, uh, someone who's more on the feminine oh, side of their expression. Not, a femme queen is an actual term. Yeah. Like yeah. Lola's a fem queen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, yes. That's what I was just like. Yeah. I'm like, where are we at? No, 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 no. <laughs> well, let me redact that. <laughs> More on the feminine end oh, of the spectrum, spectrum of their expression. It still say me. I was dating Corey at that time. So that's what I'm thinking about. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. reality. No, no, no I, I feel like I'm, you was. I feel like you was bagging the daddies that were giving. Honey, you know, I, I have a bit of everything. I'm an, an <laughs> enigma wrapped in a riddle. Don't ever try to put me into a box. <laughs> well, it's okay. We were in our early twenties. You know, my right. girls were bopping around and just figuring it out, thotting and bopping. <laughs> All right, I'm still thotting. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, this season, we talked about the uh, the aspect of performance. Okay. We talked to Noah about acting. We talked about uh, drag performance with mm-hmm. Olivia Lux, and also Raquel did a bit of drag in mm-hmm. her um, former sure life. Did. So thinking about all the drama of things, mm-hmm. let's reflect back to our early twenties. Who was most likely to be dramatic? Am I the drama? <laughs> I don't think you're the drama. Okay, I'm not the drama. I was actually going to say Tony. Really? I don't think I'm the drama. Not in a bad way. I don't think in a bad Just way. Just in a like grand don type of way. Like, yeah, okay. you, you were speaking a the, mid-Atlantic it on the context accent. that you're thinking yeah. of it and yeah, so in, in, not in a pejorative way, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, she just in a like who a, is a thinking cap on. Who, well, yeah. she, she using her <laughs> SAT words. Go deeper shirt on. <laughs> Whoa, you say pejorative deeper, in normal honey. conversation. You know, you got your, I got the Beverly Hills on. <laughs> 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 That is my tutor <laughs> on vocabulary. She said, no, we bring it back to reality to <laughs> be <laughs> the most surface level you can get. And we're back. Yeah, mm-hmm. like I think that Tony was giving grand dame. It was giving like you know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I can go along with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we talked about comedy, and mm-hmm. we also talked about um, punching down. Mm. <laughs> In our early 20s, who was most likely to make a shady joke? Well, when you said punching down, it made me think of fisting. <laughs> oh, well... Uh... <laughs> Well, were you doing more of the fisting back in the early 20s? I'm I'm never, I've never had my whole fist inside of anyone. Just a little bit. Just the knuckles. <laughs> not, not even, just, listen, that, that, don't need, that does nothing for me. Okay. Um, but, but I'm not shaming the fisting girls because, you know. Right. I mean. You know, we don't kink shame here. No, get your life. Um, now I forgot the question because I was so busy. <laughs> Who was most likely, most likely to a shady, shady, shady Yeah, a shady joke. Oh, a shady joke. I mean, in those years, me. I was gonna say Demond. It was. It I was, was gonna definitely Demond. It, it <laughs> might come out of his mouth, and then you like, did he read me? <laughs> like, do, do you feel right? <laughs> it's all. It's Meanwhile, Demond looking in a different direction. He's going to a different I'm thought. Left. He's like, oh wait, what? Oh, there. Someone's <laughs> affected by that. <laughs> I thought everybody was laughing. All right. The last scenario. We talked about money. No. Oh. Okay. In our early twenties, reflecting back on that time. Who was most likely to live above their means? Well, you, bitch. <laughs> Me? <laughs> you lived in <laughs> above your means. <laughs> when? Well, let's go in down. the studio. Let's, let's go down the track. Well, the studio, it. I was able to... Get supplemental income. You're right. So, <laughs> You're therefore, right. you were doing what? Well, actually... Living above your means. Well, I... I'm, the, the, <laughs> math, on, <laughs> the math may oh. have math a little bit differently, but, you know, Tony's BMW is a close Ooh. call. It's a close call. Well, yeah, you know, I was, Girls I was a high-low no moment because I lived in the Bronx. True. <laughs> but don't be fooled by the rocks that I got. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm still... I'm still Tok- Tokyo Tony from yeah, the block. and I was in that studio <laughs> so, apartment, but I was eating canned food, and I was on the train, yeah. even at 4 a.m. Listen, you that were... That sounds like people living above their means. Like so, you, so it's a tie. You were house poor. I, yes. No, I was outside. I was outside. <laughs> I was outside for sure. We was pre-gaming very hard because we could not buy <laughs> well, drinks at the bar. Been inside because you was paying. Because you were <laughs> living above your means. <laughs> mm, okay. Living above your means. Mm. 
She thought, um, she thought she was gonna eat you up in that BMW. I'm like, no, it was you. She says. tried it, honey. Mm. She tried it. <laughs> the <laughs> same BMW that took you from left to right and front and center. Yes, we loved yeah, her. Yeah, we did. We did. So this is a tradition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Here at Surface Level yes. Podcast. That we take questions from our listeners yeah. and we <laughs> answer them. Mm-hmm. Now, we are not doctors, lawyers, <laughs> teachers, but, we, but, we, but this it. is a classroom. This is, a, this is life stage. Well, so mm-hmm. I'm your, your teacher, <laughs> your auntie, your professor. Listen, all of those things. You need a degree when you're school in life. And so, <laughs> you know, we had, we had thousands of entries. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thousands. 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 But today, only a select few will make it. I have, I have a thousand entries in my inbox. There could be a thousand comments. Only, <laughs> only two photos remain in my hand. <laughs> so this first question from one of our listeners, I think it's just so appropriate. And we're going to start here. How does it feel to be that bitch? <laughs> <laughs> this is a question for the group. That is that. That's funny because I actually know who uh, s- submitted that question. That's very call them out. That's very sweet. <laughs> that is very sweet. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer this in the sense of like, what does it feel like to be celebrated for um, all the work that we're doing at surface level? It's nice. Mm-hmm. It's nice. I mean, we're at season eight, and we look back to when. You know, our listenership was very, very intimate, I'll say. <laughs> um, and now for it to expand to a situation where, you know, people are finding value in it, you know, across the U.S., even like Johannesburg and South Africa in general being like one of our most listened to regions in the world yeah, that yeah. like actually exceeds the the listenership in some major U.S. cities. It's like, wow, OK, like it's. It's nice to know that like there's some there's some correlation in that the the lived experiences that we're sharing on this platform is resonating with other people. Because mm-hmm. like you said, we're not experts, we're not doctors, mm-hmm. we're not yeah. mm-hmm. you know we're not ac- like at the highest levels of academia. We're just here talking about how we're processing our experiences. Yes, mm-hmm. and it's just really nice to know that you know that's doing some good for people. Yeah, I think the most special part of it is that we're having a human experience yeah. in front of people yeah, and people get to relate to that. Mm-hmm. And I think that's at its core and at the essence of what we do is like the most pure thing that you can do is be vulnerable in front of the world. And so we've opened ourselves up to do that. And it really has allowed us to, you know, be the up and coming girls. <laughs> um, yeah. And so I like that. I like being that bitch, um, and I think I'm going. I'm going to take that and I'll receive that um, because if you if you don't hold yourself up, who else will? Yeah. So it's glad I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to see other people see that for us, and I'm happy to know that I see it for myself, even if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just helpful on the days where you may not feel like that bitch. I think. Like to Jordan's point, we're having a human experience. We're we're trying to tumble our way through this life thing, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and here we typically are more buttoned up and processed. But like, there's a lot of shit that goes on outside of here. That listen, the feedback and like people seeing it and relating to it is encouraging. Uh, even in times where I don't feel like that bitch every fucking day. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. okay, and just to circle back, this question is this this segment of the show is going to be a personal questions and advice. Mm. Mm. So this is what I'm getting into. So okay. our next question here says, how old is too old and how young is too young for you all to date in a serious relationship? Does this age range change for you if it's just a hookup? Is there a range in age? How old is too old? How young is too young? You know, I, I like to say I'm I'm as I'm as old as time and as young as this moment. moment. <laughs> you have been saying this for years. <laughs> so that is a, that is the truth. Um, I would say that it is different for me. Okay. With the hookup thing, I would say there's not a range on the top, but like uh, not the top. There's not a range above. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, where are we going with no, this? No, me in like, age, um, but younger than me, like if I, like below 21, like if I can't have a glass of wine with 21. you, 
21. <laughs> like, like, if we can have a glass of wine, then I probably shouldn't be hooking up with you. A, leg- a glass of wine legally. Legally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm not. Now, now, so. now, exactly. <laughs> and, like, that's where I'm just like, mm, I feel a little uneasy there. Yeah. So, like, if you're in college, probably not going to happen. Um, dating, I would say younger, minus five, older, plus 10, but then also always open to surprises. Mm-hmm. Um, like my husband's 10 years older than me. And I think that they're in that range. We still have similarities and shared experiences, but we also like view the world a bit differently because we've come of age at different times, mm-hmm. which makes for a lot of very interesting conversation. Um, I would say also say like seriously dating anyone at this point younger than 30 like i think about myself in my 20s and how much i was fucking figuring it out yeah um and i think that you should have the space to figure it out i just don't know if i need to be in the first passenger seat witnessing it in real Mm -hmm. time yeah um (laughs) so that's just where i am but then like i always say i'm i'm open to surprises yeah and it's not a hard rule but that's kind of that that's where i am on it yeah i think as we get as we navigate life and like we, in our 20s, the question might be answered differently. Yeah. In yeah, our 30s, for sure. yeah. mid 30s, the question's gonna be answered differently. So, like, I kind of tend to agree. If it's a hookup, I'm I'm more lenient with the the number. <laughs> and age ain't nothing <laughs> but a number. But, we, but what we won't yeah. do, <laughs> what we won't do is right. what that man did. Oh. We're not gonna say his name. Who who he who, who shall not be mentioned. Let's let's just know. Wink if I know who it is. It's a singer, an R and B singer. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. No, okay. we, we'll we call him Roger Bob. You won't, <laughs> <laughs> you won't be the R and R and B. No, you won't be the R and R and B. Um, and then older. I mean, for me, I don't think there's a cap on that because it just it's it's a matter of uh, if I'm into it, I'm into right. it. So Hello? you can you can be as old as you the oldest time. Be, <laughs> yeah, the oldest time. But when it comes to like dating, I that too like. I won't say because people like if you're below a certain age, you don't have the you don't have the vernacular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that becomes a challenge. So to me, yeah, some people like you can be wiser and younger, and I think that yeah. that exists. Like Demond just gave an example of the age gap in your marriage right now. Mm-hmm. However, I think that it does come with a level of maturity, and you have to you'll know when you know. Yeah, a person that you consider sit across from and have a substantial like. I mean, because there are a lot of younger people that have lived a whole lot of fucking life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Listen, Lauren Hill recorded The Miseducation of Lauren Hill at the age of like 22, 23. Mm-hmm. So when you think mm-hmm. about that album, I yeah, I guess. That. She was like 22 when she, when she was recording that Child, album. I was not thinking like that at 22. How were, to you, put th- those how were you thinking, baby? Not as poetic. <laughs> I was just out here running around. <laughs> I was not that prolific, okay? <laughs> um, so next question. Or well, Jordan, actually, did you answer uh, no, so I'm gonna get real specific, and oh. I'm just gonna say like what my hinge uh, filters were when I was, you know, looking for love, <laughs> you know, in my um, <laughs> early 30s. No, because I think that's a good gauge for like mm-hmm. what I would date. So my my <clears throat> filters were 28 mm-hmm. to I believe 45. Mm-hmm. Um, the I think the biggest thing for me is just kind of like a I don't ever want to feel like there's one person that's kind of the more like imposing, more like authoritative figure. Daddy. Yeah. Like I don't, I, I, I've always been very sensitive to that. Like I've dated like older than 45. I remember being in my early twenties dating someone that was um, just turning 50. Mm -hmm. Um, But I don't know. I just felt for me, I felt a stronger connection to people who were going through similar life experiences as me. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I appreciated being able to bond over those things. Yeah. Um, Which is why I can I have a little bit more wiggle room to go older Mm -hmm. um, because I do think that, um, you know, once you get to a certain age, I think it's just the person's spirit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think there's some (laughs) 45 year olds that carry themselves um, a bit more exuberantly. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I think there's some, you know, 25 year olds that are just incredibly too young for me to interact with in a meaningful way and like Mm -hmm. build a life Mm -hmm. with i feel like i would be like a mentor 
Um, but for hookups, yeah, like we can, we can. But I train you. We can, <laughs> right? I, 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 I'm just like, but you can suck this dick. <laughs> but I'm like, if it's a hookup, you know, we can, we can. Somebody can be the instructor. Said, no, in that's, the situation. That, that's negotiable. Yeah. So, but mm-hmm. yeah, I think that for like long term, in my personal experience, I've tried to find something that's a little bit more within the vicinity of like where I'm at in my life. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So in this scenario. Listener says, I had a best guy friend for over five years. Though we had our conflicts sometimes, we still enjoyed each other's company and loved each other through thick and thin. It unfortunately ended last year. How do I heal from the aftermath from the that experience? So healing from the aftermath of a best a disintegration guy of friend a- for five years. So it's like a, a friendship breakup kind of and how do you heal yeah. from that mm. hmm. <laughs> I, I, I don't know enough details about this person's experience and like how it ended why it ended if it felt like it, you know there was like you know unhealthy behaviors happening but I think that anytime there's a disillusion of a close intimate friendship and you walk away feeling um, I guess broken by the end of the relationship. I think it's um, one coming to terms with that's completely natural and completely mm-hmm. normal. I think that a lot of people, as they grow, people grow in different directions, mm-hmm. values change, things that you care about may not align as much. You may have less things to connect on, mm-hmm. and you may just find yourself just gradually moving apart. Um, and I think that honoring that friendship for whatever you learned from it, whatever you received from it is probably where I would encourage this person to focus their energy. You know, what were the, what were the highlights of it? What did you appreciate about that friendship? What were the things that you felt, um, you know, weren't as positive and how can you take all of that information and move into your future friendships with a bit more intention and a bit more um, just like, being able to identify what who's the right people to be around you, I mm-hmm. think is really, really important. It's an opportunity for learning. Um, it is tough. I get it. Like, you don't every you, that person may remind you may be reminded of that person when like something comes up on TV or you hear a song or you go to a bar or mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I, I would encourage you to read. Um, and, I, and I don't say that in like this, like educate yourself but more so in like find ways in which you can kind of detach from social media constantly being connected tr- like i think that those are constant reminders of maybe an absence of mm-hmm. closeness um and what i found when i have like difficulties in my relationships like losing myself and like fantasies of a novel or stories in a mm-hmm. novel makes me feel a bit more enlightened and also a bit more distracted in a healthy way mm-hmm. away like from the loss yeah, I, I think if you if you've been in a long friendship with someone and th- that friendship ends, there's a different season for different folks that come in and out of your life, and you have to ask yourself the question of like why are, why are we no longer in that place, mm-hmm. and how do I feel? Is it healthier for me to remove myself from a situation that may have been unhealthy, or should I or should we, could we have salvaged the relationship through communicating better? Yeah. Um, and so communication is super important regardless of whether it's a friendship, an intimate relationship, you name it. And I think that a lot of times people take the easy route and abort mission versus having the real hard, tough conversations that allow you to get to the other side of that and come out with, you know, a clear decision on, okay, we talked about it and this isn't for me. Or we talked about it and I'm glad we talked about it because now that's still my bitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would just say that there, there's this thing that I've heard people say where it's um, appreciate that something happened and not that it's over and, and not fixate on the fact that it's over. Mm, um, that's good. Because like you can have very positive experiences. You can have a healthy way of relationships and things ending. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I say that a lot. Um, so I think that if that is someone you care about, or even just in other scenarios where you may have to end something, like think about 
that person holistically and not just this moment of separation. Because mm-hmm. I think when you think only about the moment of separation, you have like nasty breakups versus mm-hmm. realizing and having real conversations about how you've grown or maybe grown in different directions in life. Yeah. <clears throat> and I would also say that God willing, life is fucking long. You never know when you recross paths with people and like that where part. you all will be and how you will feel about it and what is important today that won't even be a, th- a, a, a factor mm-hmm. in the future. Um, and I think that the spirit of those relationships will always be there and you may cross paths in a way that is healthier for both of you in the future. So Yeah. And speaking of nasty breakups, oh. one of our listeners says that they're in love with their boyfriend of five years and have supported him financially and emotionally. He's told me that he doesn't want to be with me because I'm a good guy and he doesn't want to ruin me. Mm. But he dangles the possibility in my face from time to time. What should I do? Ooh. Now, this scenario, I think <laughs> I've been guilty of if I like someone and we have a chemistry, I've been the self-sabotage of person of wanting to save the friendship we have. I don't want I I always thought about the demise, right? Like mm-hmm. I never thought like the mom was just speaking in from a place of letting the thing be the thing. And I always thought about the end. Yeah. And mm-hmm. if we get into a more intimate relationship and decide to not be together, then our friendship mm-hmm. is lost with mm-hmm. it too. And so I've been th- like probably like the that person on the other end being like, let's just be friends because yeah. I like you so much that I don't want to to ruin. Mm-hmm. But dangling the possibilities yeah that's where that's where it throws me off and i rarely give this advice but you need to leave that romantic situation alone i think that if a person that you are showing up for financially and emotionally still after that they're telling you that they don't think that they want to be in it listen Mm -hmm. to them Right. Believe them. There's no amount of convincing. You can't support with more money. You can't support with more, you know, affirmations and things like that. Like they're quite literally telling you that yeah. they aren't you they aren't available for what you want. And so I think that cut your losses. You could probably still be friends, hopefully, who knows? Um, but if not, it's the on the other side is someone who will actually show up for you and they won't be second guessing whether or not they want to pursue something with you. Now, how how hard is it to decide to just be friends with someone you want more with, but then to see them with someone else? Well, how good is the sex? Ooh. Which sex? The sex that you're having with the person that you're having a dilemma with. I feel like that <laughs> probably like, like factors into some stuff too, where it's just like, what's dangling in, in front of because, the... Because the thing is, if we're not going to be together... And you don't want to have that relationship with me, but you're, yeah. I see you pursuing a relationship with other another person in front of me, and yeah. you know, you know, we. I feel like that's kind of like a common situation. Where well, yeah, like, that happens all the time. That's the thing, right? But like I always say, that has more to do with you and the healing you need to do. Yeah, <laughs> and not what's going on with this person. They told you I don't want to be together. You've agreed to be their friend. If you being their friend has an issue with them living their lives as a normal person, you don't own these people. Listen, you want to be digmatized. That's that's on you. And the reality is that person that they've moved on to probably um, is not looking for something as serious as you are. And so maybe it's like a safer place for that person to just kind of be maybe a little like bit that less person committal. More. Right. Or they need, could like that person more. If you want to be friends with this person, they will move into places in their lives where you see them with other people. And you can't be there. I'm mad about it. Th- then right. you can't. Then you need to leave. Like, man, when, man, when, listen, what Jordan said earlier. You might have to get off social media. Stop following this person. You gotta. You ha- you gotta remove I, mute the yeah. notifications. All right. communication. I also think people always think about romantic relationships as in the space that they have to be forever. Like particularly yeah. when people are monogamous, you feel like, oh no, I found my person and we commit to this thing. Mm-hmm. And love happening. Uh, there's a Jesse Boykin song where it's just like. um, if we're loved for a second, even for a moment, that's what we're here for. Mm-hmm. And I believe that. Yeah. Like you can meet people and like that doesn't discount the love that you all share. Maybe it's not continuing into this next space. And I remember even in my last relationship, I was with this person for five years and when we were breaking up. I kept feeling afraid to do it because I was like, did I waste these five years? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then it was really about yeah. me reframing like, no, that was an experience in life that right. I needed what to What did have I learn? When and I learned a lot yeah. that I was able to expand and think differently going forward. Yeah. 
Well, speaking of the love we share, mm -hmm. this listener says, are y'all open to dating one of your viewers? <laughs> Asking for a friend. <laughs> and this is it. the last question of this, this segment of my <laughs> TED Talk. <laughs> Personal <laughs> questions and advice? Yeah. I'll go on a date. Where are we going? You go on a date? Why not? Yeah. I mean, listen, everyone's definition of a date, like, is, I think it's, like, almost subjective sometimes because it's like was it a date or was it just coffee don't get me started <laughs> <laughs> i've shown up to so many coffees and then found out that it was a fucking date i'm like oh i'm sorry i thought that we were so, i'd be so be like jordan you're going on a date it's not a date they just have to be, i'm like girl nobody I'm like, likes no, coffee they that much wanna, they want to <laughs> hang out and they want to catch up i'm trying to find community i'm just like they don't want to hang out or catch up like, y'all don't even find, know I'm each like, other oh my god <laughs> well block so it's on a date honey <laughs> <laughs> um Listen, if I were single, I would be into dating one of my listeners. Uh, and even with being in a relationship, I'm open to the community. <laughs> so we can definitely chat. Um, and we can leave it where it... Well, actually, we can put it on the floor. Well, we can put it on the floor. Right. Well, technically, I guess I did date one of our listeners. Because, like, as we, like, my partner listened to the show actively. Okay. Like, if, and, like, it all kind of happened around the same time. And that was a, the show and talking about it and experiences was a part of our getting to know each other. Now, how was that? Because. Because I know you, you I had a very different experience. She said, you better not turn it on. Yeah. <laughs> like, because I'm, I'm always, I've had an experience. You obviously had a great experience yeah. with somebody who watched the show and you bonded over that. Um, I've had an experience with somebody who watched the show, but I felt like they already knew the answer to all of my questions in the getting to know you phase. And uh -huh. it kind of made it feel like. I was just like, okay, what part of what episode do I need to, need to explain That's today? Interesting. And it felt like it. I don't know. It was very different than any other dating experience that I've ever had in the past before we started this um, podcast. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, you know, you get to know people and you ask questions and you're mm. curious versus like someone asking you questions that they've already heard us discuss on the show. And then it just, I don't know. It got. But like, how psychologically strange for open me? Open are you when you're talking to people you're dating? Because like. There's so many things you can ask me about that we don't talk about on this show where I wouldn't feel like they knew all the answers about getting to know me. And I also, there's a lot about you that you haven't discussed on the show. So, yeah. like, is it? Maybe it was a line of questioning that, um, the line of questioning of questions being that they already knew the yeah. answer to, which yeah. was later revealed. Like, they told some information to me that they had already listened to on the show, but I hadn't shared with them. It was. Right. That's interesting because I was going to no. say, like, could, could you have been projecting? But in this scenario, it sounds like, no, actually, the question was loaded. Um, yeah, and not loaded. It was like leading, I guess, where like they knew the answer, but they wanted to see how you was going to answer, and they they like heard you say something on the show, and then asked you that same question to so see what. It was given, but then, it how was, did you answer the question in, given, in life versus on the show? <laughs> <laughs> did you get caught in some mess? Is that what you did? No, like? no, okay. it's just more so like come, come, <laughs> he said that that's a live receipt. It's like Times it's like coming <laughs> it's like coming to a, it's like coming to a date like very very well researched on the person that you're getting to know i don't know it it, it became a, a bit uh strange for me okay <laughs> <laughs> i'm thinking we're not celebrities but then i'm thinking about how an actual celebrity dates like you can't not show up to the date with like a i think a lot of a celebrities also date people uh, who are also in that space and so mm. there's i think there's maybe a understanding that like you probably googled me i probably googled you, you and we can these niggas before you go out huh you look these niggas up before you go out i do so but then, but but, er, but it's er, just more to find about but, you so you right, don't like but it. they don't have they don't have 80 <laughs> hours of content talking about their lived experiences from <laughs> early birth to today <laughs> said, wikipedia.com <laughs> <laughs> All right, so moving into our next segment about identity uh, and community. So mm -hmm. that's one of, I would say, the pillars of our show. I'm going to lead us in a few things that the girls served up. Okay. okay. Let's start here. <clears throat> Why is Damon so shady? Oh, I said hello <laughs> on the Surface Level Instagram page and on his page, and I can't get a hey. I we can't were get a literally hey. neighbors. I hung out more than a few times. It's cool, though. <laughs> I still support the show because I love the content. But hello again, Demar. Keep up the good work. You are amazing. 
Uh, you are an amazing trio. Best wishes. Oh, well, that's, that was that's nice. That, that was, was so passive aggressive. went so many ways. But it was sweet at the uh, end. They put one, a cherry on top. I would say <laughs> it was passive aggressive. One, I, thank you. And we value everyone that listens to our show. Um, <laughs> Do you mean that? <laughs> yes. Unfortunately, I'm listening to the voice. I did look at this and I, 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 I did not recall meeting this person. I felt bad that we didn't. So if you see me again in life, say hello. Um, but will you say it back? I I always say hello in life. Apparently, Devon always says hello. He just doesn't remember after Child, the exchange. Listen, I, hello, listen, I recently me. found out that there are people I've been intimate with said, "Oh, we were intimate." I said, Don't remember it. Um, so you were less than memorable. Life happens. <laughs> it's not even that. It's unremarkable. Just that terrible memory. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's not. I don't. I don't. I, being shady, I would say requires a level of effort that I'm not willing to to give when I don't know someone. I guess that. Strangers. Shady is intentional. Yeah, like I'm I'm not maybe I, forgetful. That's what J Lo would say about Mar uh, Mariah. Mm. <laughs> She's forgetful. Very forgetful. Mm -hmm. I, don't I, don't know her. <laughs> I don't know her. I don't know her. I don't remember I like I don't, <laughs> I'm I am i well, the net net is that if you see Damon again, say, say hey, hello hey, and, br hey. and bring up this message, though. Don't be all, I'm, um, you know, like, you know, mysterious right. and stuff like that. Say, I was the one that sent the question. Right. I, I mean, I don't Y'all could probably laugh about it. I would laugh about it. We ain't beefing. Listen, <laughs> I have no dark. Cardi B said, if you see me and I don't speak, that means <laughs> I don't fuck with you. <laughs> I'm not Cardi I'm B. I'm a boss. You're a worker, bitch. <laughs> well, I do Tony, not say that. Too much <laughs> and Tony going to be in there sorry and mess. <laughs> see, an uh, instigator. Right. See? Mm -mm. And then I'm fighting. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm screaming, everybody stop! <laughs> Jordan breaking up the fight. <laughs> Jordan is the muscle. Okay. Let the, what else our community got to say? Uh, going off on the topic around is fear of femininity the thief of joy? I would love to know if there is a deciding factor in the spaces you enter, parties, events, gatherings, yeah. um, and how if there's any bias amongst close friend, close relationships that you've built with feminine or non-gender conforming folks. So are we, do we feel, I guess, accepting towards non-gender conforming folks and is like a high feminine, feminine energy a factor in places we do or do not go? Hmm. I, I'm thinking back on all my many years of being a gay black man mm -hmm. and I've, always had some folks around me who leaned more femme. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've always been comfortable with that. I always admired someone who can stand 10 toes down, mm -hmm. stand on business about who they are, and not change that based on who they're around. Mm -hmm. And I think because of that, I've been able to allow people to be who they are around me and, mm -hmm. I don't, and I don't have to give people permission to be who they are. Yeah. Yeah. But, but they feel comfortable. A, they feel safe. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. that doesn't dictate the rooms that I go in or if I uh, allow myself to go to an event or mm -hmm. um, build a friendship with said person based on them being more femme. Uh, and so as a butch queen, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I ebb and flow between my mask Masculinity, my femininity, and I love all of those parts. And you know, I embrace anyone who leans on either end of that spectrum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I appreciate more feminine energy. Um, like my closest friends, even like when I was a child, like gravitating towards queer people. We weren't out to each other quite yet, but like <laughs> you know, I really connected the most with the the more feminine girls mm -hmm. you know like even thinking about like the first friend that i ever came out to um was a lot more uh feminine than me and i think present day um i just find that when there is a feminine energy in a space for me it feels a bit lighter mm -hmm. so for example thinking about like parties and things like that one of the things that I really love about going to Poppy Juice is that the energy there is mm -hmm. a lot more inclusive to have other gender expressions and gender mm -hmm. identities. And I feel like in some way that makes the party more lighthearted and fun. I feel like sometimes when I go to parties where it's just like just all masculine energy, 
I'm just like, y'all don't want to dance. Nobody's dancing. <laughs> nobody's dancing. I'm like, I don't want to stand around like... this bar all night and keep ordering cocktails. You know, it's <laughs> it's a, it's a different vibe. But you know, when I when, when you're around more feminine energy, I feel like there's just more expression with clothing. There's it it feels like a warm hug. Mm-hmm. And so for me, yeah, I think that those spaces when there is, you know, a full spectrum of masculine feminine energy, I just think that it just makes a bit more of a enjoyable experience for me. And mm-hmm. I try to find what those experiences are um, and go to them because I'm enjoying them more and more as I mature. Yeah. I mean, I don't have much to add to that. I would just add. Yeah, child, we, we like all the folks around here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. All right. Oh, another somebody else mad. Jordan is dead wrong Ooh. about the effects of the brand of Tomboy. That's a wild way to put it, to be honest. Next time y'all have a convo, include masculine people who have lived in, through the feminine gaze. Oh. Okay. I, so I think this person is talking about, we did an episode about gender expression. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I made a comment saying that growing up, I felt as though if a young boy was showing um, feminine traits, Mm -hmm. there was automatically a question of their sexuality. Mm -hmm. Whereas I felt like what I was looking at was that when I saw girls that were showing um, more like masculine traits, they would be branded tomboy and it wasn't just as hasty of a decision to go into sexuality. Mm -hmm. Um, I still pretty much stand by that observation. I understand that my anecdotal like commentary on it is literally just my experience in yeah. Trenton, New Jersey, going to my middle school and my high school, my elementary school. And so if it came across as if I was speaking for the entire population of queer people and mass presenting um, people, that wasn't the that wasn't the intention. But um, always love hearing that feedback because the thing is like we answer these questions a lot of times you know we're in the moment we're talking about our experience and there isn't always this filter of like what was everybody else's experience Mm -hmm. and you know i think that we should absolutely have um a guest on the show that has that experience of you know maybe more masculine presenting but through a a feminine gaze i would love to have that conversation so thank you for sharing that comment well, that, that's the fourth wall of this show, right? It's our opinions and thoughts, and then we have... Yo. <laughs> Hello? To, to let the, us know yeah, what you feel. Right. To come in and offer a different perspective. And mm-hmm. sometimes we hear it and we listen and we're like, ciao, girl, bye. Right. Ciao, cheese. <laughs> and then sometimes it's giving like, hmm, noted. Let me yeah. do some research. I mean, it's let like me the, listen to something different. And let me grow and evolve in right. my thought. It's the yeah. tagline of the show. Stay curious. Like okay. and, and like we take in those experiences, feedback, thoughts, cure things from everybody here. Like service level is not just the three of us. It's everybody who engages with it. So, mm-hmm. all right. Last one from my section. Uh, what character values in a friend are most important to each of you? And what makes your heart warm? Oh, what makes your heart warm? <laughs> mm. I, I'll go. Like um, a hug from the inside. Oh. <laughs> Papa. <laughs> <laughs> um I feel the rush. <laughs> I think it's so <laughs> that 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 Australian twink ate that ate so that up. Good. Bitch. So good. I don't care what y'all say. Um but no, I I would say that the thing that I value most in friendship, uh, even associates people I'm not necessarily with every day, <clears throat> is an authenticity and an ability to stand and show who you are. Um like Every time, like people that I'll, I'll talk to y'all, like, oh, I like this person, or I like, I really like that person, and they're never because they're similar or comparable in thought or experience to me. It's more so because I'm looking at them, I'm talking to them, and I feel like I'm getting exactly who they are. Mm-hmm. Versus sometimes you meet people and it's just like, is this you, or is this the version of you that you have when you're at work, or the version that you have at the club, or the version you? I'm like, I would love to know. I, I just like people where it's a little more all cards on the table. Mm-hmm. Like, if you loud, be loud. If you like, um, if you have a, a snippy personality, that's what you got. Um, if you grew up a certain way where you have a level of privileges and you know you got them, live in that. And, and I think that I 
respect that because I feel like that's I know how to like place someone in my life. I know how to interact mm-hmm. with you. I know the type of relationship we can have versus I'm just like which way are you bending yourself up to like meet okay. what you think I like? And that's when I'm like, I'd rather not have that. I'd rather have real relationships with real people where we like exchange ideas, even if sometimes they're similar, sometimes they're different. Yeah. But I think that's dope. Listen, girl, why you <laughs> sitting down? Stand up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, what you're saying resonates with me because when it comes to people who you have that knee jerk reaction or response, where you're like, I like that person. Mm-hmm. That means there's a energy there yeah. that resonates with you and it feels good when you meet someone like that that you just get. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And sometimes that's not something that can be you know, put into words. Like words can't give what necessarily what I'm thinking about how I feel yeah. when I meet someone that just like does it for me. And I'm saying does it for me in a sense of not that I, you know, intimately or a person that I'm attracted yeah. to in that way, but just like I I think like I'm thinking about the law of attraction and what I put out into the universe is what I hope to <laughs> attract back. And so when I am p- presenting myself to the world and when I receive that back from someone it it's it works. It's, <laughs> it's giving it's the way you act. It's the way you act. (laughs) And so, and then they're outside of those things. You know, I do value honesty. I I value being able to pull someone's card and say, like, bitch, you were dead wrong for that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not. And they receive it. And they were, and for them to receive it. Yeah. Or for us to have a dialogue and a conversation about it, because maybe I'm saying they're wrong, and then I can understand. You have a conversation to understand why they think that they were not. Mm-hmm. And then come out on the other side of that where we either have decided like there could have been some changes or this could have ha- been handled differently. Like it's a dialogue. It's not so black and white. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I enjoy that with, I value that with any friendship that I have is to be able to have honest, real conversations and to know that on the other side of that is where the real growth happens, mm-hmm. where we can actually like evolve and become closer friends and build right. a bond. Yeah. I think, you know, I'm a pretty guarded person. And so I think when I look for friends, I'm looking, or not looking for friends, but when I meet people, I think what I value is getting the sense that they're going to be patient with the development of our rapport. Um, I don't like feeling rushed into a friendship mm-hmm. um i you know i i kind of want to build a level of safety emotional safety with the person before i truly start going into like what's going on with my life and things like that and so i find that i tend to gravitate towards people who are um i guess considerate and aware of the fact that i may be a bit more reserved around people who i don't know mm-hmm. and are like and are willing to sort of like move at a more relaxed pace with me like i I find that i I find that to just be a bit more uh of a secure attachment for me um and then also the same thing as you all i think like being around a friend that um can call you on your shit but also know what they're talking about like i don't want you to just call me out because you feel like you know that's what you do right. like i want you to actually come from a place of like i thought about this like this is why um and someone who can also do it um you know kindly cuz i am i am pretty sensitive even though i come off like i don't care about things or i don't care about how people like react to me like i do think about things a lot and so um i think you know compassion is really really important to me as well mm-hmm. so compassion intelligence and patience mm-hmm. yeah. yeah you know as your long-standing friend, I can definitely attest to having to be mindful of the approach, right? And like understanding if I say this to Jordan like this, he's probably going to receive it like this. Yeah. And understanding how then if I want my friend to hear and understand whatever my feedback is, Mm -hmm. I need to be mindful of how I position it and deliver it yeah i mean it's one of the things that had been 
when we were younger and a lot fucking crazier. Like one of the hardest things about our relationship. Mm -hmm. Like you, there's, I'm not good at delivery. I'm just, I'm spitting it out and I'm like, and that's a skill. That's a thing where I'm like, actually, no, you need to be more considerate of like how you bring shit to people. You can't just go yelling at everybody, Devon. Also, you are quite, are sensitive to how people bring things to you. And I think we've learned a lot of, even about each other, but just like about being people. And it's just mm-hmm. like, am I being too insensitive? Am I maybe yeah. overthinking a certain thing that somebody brought to me? And how do we talk about those things? I think it's valuable in friendship. So, yeah. Look, we had a lot of time to get to learn each other and yeah. iron out the the bumps and still continue to do so. Because like now we're in our mid thirties and we're changing again. Right. Mm-hmm. And it won't stop. So can't yeah. stop. Won't stop. Won't. The fastest way to get to where you want, slowly. <laughs> okay? It's a slow burn, baby. That's what I tell people. I'm just like, listen, we don't do overnight friendships. Um, okay, so the final segment is going to be around just like all things related to the show. We got okay. a couple of questions in that's just asking us about, you know, surface level, the future of surface level, X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. So the first question is, if you could pick one dream guest for a future season, who would it be and why? <laughs> You said them before, um, Jenna Monet. Uh, and mm. I, I'm saying them again because I listened to them on um, Trevor Noah's podcast. And I, I think I sent it to you all. And they're like very into technology, but then also very into like the creative process and how you respect both parts of it. And it was one of those things where I was just like, I feel like Tony needs a friend sometimes. So she's not always just in the middle. And it was mm. like one of those things where somebody was giving very pointed, intelligent, thoughtful feedback from that space of compromise. And I was just like, I think, think that that would be really good energy on the show. And I th- just think they're fucking incredible. So, mm-hmm. mm. Tony. I'm still thinking. Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I'll go while, um, <laughs> while you're thinking. Um, I would love to have Lil Nas X on the show. Mm. Um, I am so, 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 so interested in what's going on in his head. Mm-hmm. Um, from you know the start of his uh, mainstream career to present day and just kind of having so much conversation around who he is, his expression, what he stands for, controversial things. I'm just curious like what he's going through. It seems from the outside looking in that it's a tremendous amount of pressure while also experiencing a tremendous amount of opportunity and Mm -hmm. new experiences. And I'm just like, how does one wrap their mind around that experience and are able to navigate it healthily? Mm -hmm. Um, Because he's still so young. Um, I'm just so curious about how he's taking it all in because the black queer experience is not an easy one. And that's amplified when you are at that level of notoriety. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it would be awesome to have someone like that on that is uh, taking on, that's a lot of like weight on one person that has the kind of stardom that he has and is like first of his kind in many ways, Mm -hmm. Um, especially to a generation of Mm -hmm. people. So with that, it's like heavy is the head that wears the crown. Um, But for me in terms of, dream guests, like there's so many people I can name, you know, that I would love to speak to. But as I sat here and thought about it, I'm I'm interested in speaking to folks who are interested in speaking to me. Ooh. And what I mean by that is I think that it's an equal exchange of thoughts mm-hmm. and energy and time spent and learning mm-hmm. someone and I, I'm I am curious about folks who are curious about having yeah. a dialogue like no, that. Like, I remember Olivia did our show this season. Olivia Lux did our show. And she watches it, and it, like she came on and was just like, oh. Like, I like was excited just to share the space. And, yeah. and I think that it, it's fun when we have guests like that. Like, yeah. we, and we generally have a lot of guests like that, where it's not just like, there's not like a press stop. Mm-hmm. It's just like people that want to have real conversations and want to like really get into it. That's always fun. That energy's great. Yeah, like one of my favorite guests, and there, there have been many who I enjoy, but like when Nico Anon came on, yeah, mm-hmm. there was an energy and just a, a down to earthness yeah. mm-hmm. and familial felt like 
we known each other for a long time. Yeah. We were able to just like kick it and be cool and kiki and pull each other's card and, and joke. And I, that to me was like uh, kind of if I were to put like the quintessential, mm -hmm. you know, guest in my head, it would be like someone like that. that Nico was in. great because Nico was active you know yeah. asking questions too like if, we're, if there was a mm -hmm. conversation that was being had nico would be like well wait what do you think about x y and z and i was just like oh right mm -hmm. I, I quite enjoy the guests asking yeah. a question to us because to your point like it creates a certain a real conversation and it's you know this show which i love about it and what i think differentiates us um to some extent is that we do have such a deep bond and relationship with one another as hosts and so when we do have a fourth person on i always really really like it when it feels like they're just an extension of the friend group yeah mm -hmm. you know as opposed to it feeling like yeah. all right you know like get out all your messaging points right like i do enjoy when it's like okay like we're curious about you be curious about us and then i think that makes the best you yeah. know conversation and we generally have people in the show like we're going to talk about this thing and it's not their product it's just we think you would have an interesting point of view on life and i think People always be like, I reached out. We're not, not on the show. But like, it's never, we're always thinking about where and how we can have conversations with people that are much more interesting, mm -hmm. I would say, than just I'm selling a thing or I'm doing a thing. Like, I don't want to go on some other show and just talk about doing service level. I want to talk about my life and this is a part of it and how it, ex how it informs me as a person. But like, yeah. Okay. All right. So um, let's talk about... Um, the success of the the show. Mm -hmm. How has the success of your podcast helped your self growth and shaped your friendship? Um, I would say it probably saved me and yours friendship. <laughs> <laughs> I, I second that. Yeah, um, and I think it, it life happens. You and I were doing a lot of living a few years ago, um, and not in a good place together. And we, it, that happened to coincide with us doing this thing together where it was just like, okay, well, we have to be around each other for now at least. Um, and it just, it put us in the space of like, okay, let, we're going to have an actual conversation that like, I don't know if it would have happened had we not had to continue to be around each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it would have been one of those things where either a, deep and lasting friendship had it either ended or we wait for it to come back around in some other space many years or at some period later. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so I would say that first. Um, I would say that it has helped me learn more about Tony. Um, I think that sometimes our dynamic has been like us being crazy, you being chill. And I think that it's given the space where like you get that equal voice because it can't just me being me and Jordan arguing about stupid shit all the time. <laughs> um, which there were parts of our, our journey that that happened that I felt like I'm like it's only getting like lost in this. And I, I felt like it's I've learned a lot more about you and I've enjoyed that. Um, and I was just saying it's also like everyone that listens to it is like this mirror and like it's reflecting back and, and we put something out and like our experience is, 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 is processed and spoken back to us through social media, through people we've just generally met through doing this um, and it's made me just think a lot more specifically about how I feel about life like between preparing to come on the show and like me really sitting down fine-tuning what my point of view is being here and like bouncing ideas and r back and forth between the three of us and then like bouncing that back to a larger audience like it's mm -hmm. all this learning process that's kind of hyper driven um, my points of view on I don't know 80 or so things in the last three years yeah yeah, I mean, the success of the show. <laughs> what, what is success? <laughs> success for us was literally reaching one person, right? Yep. And if someone, that one person hears something that we say that can have any sort of impact on their life, uh, that to us was our North Star of what we wanted to accomplish. Yeah. And so to that, have accomplished that exponentially mm -hmm. it just it's a whole different moment now and the self growth part of it has been also exponential you know i feel that 
through doing this show, we've grown like tenfold. It's kind of just been like a moment that we never knew we needed and don't know wh where the girls would be. <laughs> I often think about that. Real, like if we weren't doing surface level, what would I be? Not to say like the show has, you know, it's made my life, but it's 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 no, a, a big part. It's yeah. a big part, and it's yep. a thing that I'm like with without having had this growth vehicle. Mm -hmm. What I have, how would I have been accomplishing doing the work? Yeah, and would I have been as consistent and as proactive and as intentional and deliberate about that business? Mm -hmm. I don't know, mm -hmm. and I know for a fact that. I can attribute a lot of my own self journey, like my own discovery and self journey and, and growth through, um, having these conversations. Yeah. And through having these conversations, it's allowed our friendship to, it's unlocked a whole different level of getting to know each other. Cause sometimes we say things on this show that, we are discovering for the first time mm -hmm. that we've mm -hmm. never heard each other say, um, whether for better or worse. It might be some shit that's like, bitch, you, you a Trump supporter? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Jordan's a Trump supporter. Um, <laughs> you are a Republican. I, I, I just you knew are. it. I Jordan's just a Republican. I'm, like, I'm just sitting here quiet, just <laughs> waiting for y'all to say something like that. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I really, like, this has been a value add that is, I can't say how um, precious it is, but it, it definitely has been the one, not the two, the I and the T. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it really forces us to think critically about things that are going on in our lives. At mm -hmm. least for me, when we, have a, when we have a topic that comes up, some of these topics, like I haven't really done a deep dive on you know, the history of it mm -hmm. or my relationship to it or my current attitudes to a present day. And I think that had that episode not been something that we did, who knows when I would have gotten around to right. actually, you know, deepening my education around that subject matter. And I feel like not only is it, you know, a, a, a great educational opportunity, um, it's also a it's quite cathartic and therapeutic. Um, there's a lot of times, like you said, Tony, we're saying things for the first time. Sometimes we're sharing things that's just like, oh, I never shared this publicly, mm -hmm. or maybe I never shared it with you all. Mm -hmm. Like even I think back to the episode that we had with our parents, like I have never been that um, um, tongue in cheek about sexual jokes like that around my mom. Mm -hmm. Like I always thought that that was not inappropriate um, just because of like, you know, mother son dynamics, but inappropriate because I'm like, does she want to hear about my gay sex? Like that <laughs> feels like, you know, like it feels, it, you grow up thinking like nobody wants to hear about your gay sex. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's just, we barely gay, gay sex for right. being gay. Sending me right now. <laughs> now you know, all people want to hear about your gay sex. <laughs> <And> that, <laughs> right. And meanwhile, everybody wants like, to know about your gay sex. But you know, like, and that was such a, <laughs> that was such a small part of that episode. But like, I walked away feeling like, wow like i feel a bit more just kind of open with my mom okay so sexy <laughs> no it's just, it's just it just feels like maybe i can open up a bit more about my romantic life yes. you know what i mean i don't have to just keep it super like close to the vest and so it's <laughs> helped my, it's just, just mother, about mother Teresa said i went to my you know i went to george george and i was on the podcast we were talking about butt sex <laughs> i remember the episode we did about HIV or what? No, the one that um Deshaun came on. Whatever. Oh yeah, like, and like health, sex, sex health. health. Yeah. And I was talking, and my mom, I think, listened, started listening to that. She said, "Oh, you all really, really, you really go there." <laughs> and I was just like, "You just wait. We have an episode about church coming later this season. I'm gonna send that one to you." Yeah. So I think our my gay sex really. <laughs> really? Sent, sent Miss Epps as well. But I think that it's like it 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 it. For me, at least, mm -hmm. it helped to take away some of the shame. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Where it's just like, 
It's not like he I talk ashamed. about it all the time. <laughs> I mean, there was some shame around. To- I, I think it's no secret that like I keep my, you know, I'm I'm the most private probably out of the mm-hmm. three of us about like what goes on in the bedroom. And it's not just coming from a space of like, oh, I think it needs to be private. I think part of it is mm-hmm. a bit of shame and feeling like, oh, I don't know, want people to know those intimate details about me because they might judge me. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of self-growth that goes around with that. And then mm-hmm. also I think the friendship thing. Um, like I said this before, but we have to be so much more intentional about conflict resolution. Um, mm-hmm. I think that when it was just a friendship absent of um, a business, you could let things die, like, you know, cool off and you could take days off and stuff like that and mm-hmm. circle back to it. Now it's just like, I can't even get into an argument with you because I actually, you, I actually owe you some work for the podcast tonight and we got a slack Fuck later tonight. You. Do you have your deliverable though? <laughs> right. So it's just like, we're going to have to talk every damn day about work. Like the friendship needs to be in a good place. And right. so for, for me, at least I find that like, I try to be a bit more um, open about things that are bothering me. Like it's, scary sometimes like i've mm-hmm. called both tony and damon separately to just be like i'm feeling like this like I, I i don't feel great about this situation that happened i don't know if i'm overthinking it but like it's really on my mind and i feel like i can't move forward and i think in the past i would have been embarrassed to make those phone calls because it's just like oh i seem like a weak ass bitch that's like you mm-hmm. know overthinking about something small that maybe they don't even care about but um in both of those situations with both of you i felt like you honored the conversation, you honored, you know, whatever I was going through and we were able to talk about it and get through it. And I felt closer to you all because of it. I like that you do that now. It's really tough. Yeah, it's more productive. Yeah. Because I feel like we used to have times where things would be festering. It'd be like a month later. It'd be like, and another. I'm like, what? And are last you month on, on Tuesday night, at the, the and you court? looked at me out the side of your eye and I knew that you was talking right. shit. And I just been mm-hmm. like, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, because uh, listen. Nobody's a mind reader, and I can't. I can get in your head only, but so much. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy that you know the burn book is definitely lighter these days. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as thick of a book. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, next. Uh, what we do an episode that talks about how we decided on our career choices. Would we do? An Would we do an episode? Yeah, somebody's interested in that being an episode. I, I want to know how y'all feel about that suggestion. Um, I'm bored. Um, I don't know. I think when it comes to work, I've come to a place where I'm like, when I'm outside of work, I don't want to talk about work. Uh, now I am open to career advice, talking to someone if you want to learn about like, okay, you work at this company. I'm interested in learning how you got there. Like I'm always open to those conversations. Would I want to do a podcast episode about it? I don't know. Maybe not. But also... Through what lens, right? I can. I'm willing to have any conversation, but let's make it interesting. Yeah. yeah. Let's not just have your status quo moment. How do we? How do we have the conversation about work in corporate America, but make it surface level? So that's what I'm looking for. I don't want to. I'm not interested in like. I don't want to be bored. Like we have to sit on these mics and come to the studio and talk to each other. Like let's. Wake it up. <laughs> <laughs> and that to me is, that's when you can like, how, what's the interesting question, right? Yeah. Like some things you have to ask because you have like you for have context. context and, yeah. But I, I we, are, we try to challenge ourselves and I think there's a lot more in store for where we are going in terms of our headspace on how we can continue having interesting conversations. Yeah. Things that we would want to listen to mm-hmm. in our downtime. And I think that's important. Mm-hmm. I don't have anything to add. Yeah, I, I I feel the same way. Like, I probably, out of the three of us, would be probably the most excited to talk about, I mean, like, full, my, car- full my career journey and stuff like that. But <laughs> here are some <laughs> suggested readings I've curated for everybody for this episode. But, you know, I, I, I agree. Like, you know, at the it, like the fun part about this is that it's actually a creative project for us. You know what I mean? Like, it's... We have 10 episodes that we need to do, which is not a lot. A lot of podcasts, they are weekly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, sure, they they can cover everything because they'll always be back the next Wednesday. Mm-hmm. But for us, when we're just doing 10 episodes and we're trying to create something that we feel like could actually be not only valuable, but entertaining, mm-hmm. um, I think that, yeah, it, we would have to figure out the lens. But as it stands, I don't know. 
I would honestly be more interested in talking about how we create this. Yeah. How we got like this is a more interesting story. I think there's a lot of background shit that ha- goes on that like that. would be even more interesting to me talking about that fucking job. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> 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 that fucking job. Yes. Listen to uh, Cash Rules, everything around me. We'll talk a little bit about our careers there. All right. Next question. I love you guys' show. It has really allowed me to look into the minds of different experiences inside of the queer community. However, I would love to go even further. Go deeper. deeper. Ooh. Are there any books or articles that you would recommend to help expand my thinking about different topics inside of the community? Mm. You know, I'll go first because this is new to me. I recently have explored a book club Mm -hmm. and they call themselves the Literary Supper Club because every month when they come to talk about the book, there's supper. And there's that breaking of the bread and that fellowship. And I am someone who wants to read more and wants to discover more and wants to explore more. And I'm not been so intentional about it. And this is the one thing that I'm like, let me try something new Mm -hmm. in a group of like-minded individuals that is also an accountability moment so that I'm holding myself accountable, but I also have other folks uh, that are doing and sharing the same experience. Uh, and it doesn't feel like a chore or like homework. It's not so much pressure to like, yeah. you must have read this and if you didn't read, don't show up and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but it, it just kind of, it's a forcing function of like, I don't want to show up because when the girls are talking about the book and this part and that part, I want to be over there to- silent. You just at the supper. <laughs> just at no the club. Supper. I'm, I'm stirring the pot at the supper giving. <laughs> and then what, because uh, what happened in, on that Girl, part? what happened <laughs> next? <laughs> like, but I want to contribute. And, but also just for my own, like, learning and there's there's you can never learn enough like always be a student yeah Mm -hmm. and i want to do that and so i'm not gonna offer up any books for you to read you can do what y'all reading at the supper club Oh, well, I'm the She didn't get the book. <laughs> yeah. when, when you pay your dues, <laughs> then you can, you you better, can come you better, to the supper. You better club. send that Venmo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like that's I'm I'm that's sort of like my roundabout way of answering the question um in terms of just like my experience of of pouring into me mm-hmm. so yeah. that my cup can run it over so that I, what I have in my cup is for me mm-hmm. what pours out of the cup is for, you. for y'all yeah. and if I don't have nothing pouring out of that cup overflowing guess what you can't have nothing <laughs> less <laughs> I need to go to bed so you still filling your literary cup don't up. matter <laughs> <laughs> um, alright so I always recommend No Ashes in the Fire um, Darnell Moore's book it was one mm. of those queer yeah. black stories that like I was just like oh Mm-hmm. Just like I, you, you know, Oprah gets like real fired up about a book. She yes. gets fired up about every book, mm-hmm. yeah. but like I felt that way, um, and I've recommended it. I, I've bought it. I've given copies of it away to people. Mm-hmm. Um, love, 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 love that story. Love that book. Um, I would also say that oh, I read a New York Times article that I sent you all um, a few weeks ago. It's called "Coming Out Late: Finding a New Life in Midlife." Uh, finding a new life in midlife, Ooh. and it's uh, Charles Blow wrote this article about uh, his experience and then the experience of other people coming out up 40 and above. Um, mm-hmm. And I think like in where I was coming from when I was thinking about this season of reflection and just like understanding experiences of people who've come before us, I think right now and today, like especially if you're younger, you're like, well, everybody's gay or everybody's queer and it's just like so easy and mm-hmm. why would you not do this? And you're DL and you must hate yourself. But I think it's important to understand the context from which we've come to understand why the, the ground is so fertile for us to grow today. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was something that I think gave a really good peer um, into that um and yeah those are two things that i was thinking about okay okay um i would recommend a novel called uh don't cry for me by Mm -hmm. daniel black um i in fact cried a lot reading that book (laughs) uh the book is uh written it's a series of letters written by a father on his deathbed to his uh queer son Mm -hmm. whom he did not accept growing up and trying to make amends before he passed away Mm -hmm. and it was just oh my goodness it was it was one of those books that I think really did a beautiful job of unpacking um 
generational trauma mm -hmm. and uh, these sort of the prison of masculinity. Mm -hmm. And you could kind of see the father kind of like working through all of the things that he was taught growing up around masculinity and gender identity and then imposing it on his child. Um, for me, it was it helped to create a certain level of compassion for people within the black community who hold potentially homophobic views, but kind of takes it a step further and say, like, well, where did those originate from? Mm -hmm. um, how did they get there? And um, are we just looking at a person who doesn't have the tools to undo the learning? Mm -hmm. um, so I thought that, that was a really beautiful book, uh, very emotional. Um, and yeah. I think that that's something that people should absolutely check out. Um, the final question of season eight. So season eight was um, a beautiful season around reflection and looking at the past to sort of uh, shine the light forward. And so the last question is a forward looking question. What are you curious about? <laughs> hmm. The last question. I told Tony I wasn't going to cry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I am curious about how I can create a, some fucking passive income because I feel like too much of my waking life is committed to making a living versus mm -hmm. living. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that in my ability to want to pay less of my energy into like a capitalist system and just more energy into like me as an artist, as a person, as a human, having relationships, um, I just like, how do I do something that like every day I'm not like, okay, let me do all this shit to keep the roof over my fucking head. Mm -hmm. Just let the roof be there. Do I need to be, I need to learn how to build a house. Mm -hmm. I need to become a construction worker. Well, okay. And an architect. I got to build my own house. Which I going to be 15 years. And then I got to put up, then I got to get all these student loans. Don't invite so me over to that is, house. This is a bad, this is a, <laughs> a strange loop. That's, That's not a good idea. Scratch that. <laughs> Scratch that idea. Um, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I'm, uh, uh, I just want to live. <laughs> I don't want to do work like <laughs> like like the job. You know, this is my life's work. <laughs> 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 the job is what allows me to do my life's work. But I I hope one day that my life's work allows me to do my life's work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious about, and I'm going to take it back to. A few seasons ago, I'm curious about what would happen if we all just stopped pretending. Hello. <laughs> I think that as we, you know, the pandemic taught us a lot and it allowed us to take a step back and it allowed us to sit still and it allowed people to realize what's around them and appreciate what's around them and get rid of or remove the layers and the facade and what you had to be, who you presented yourself as, it really humbled the girls. And that to me is what I am curious about on a day-to-day -day basis. And as life goes back to post pandemic, because I don't think life is ever going back to what it was, it's forever changed, but people are now putting the mask back on and you know, slowly but surely putting those layers in front of them so that when you meet someone, you, you're you not seeing their, their pandemic self. Mm -hmm. you're, you're seeing what they've built back up and mm -hmm. put that foundation and that makeup back on. And I want the girls to just stop pretending. Just be, exist, experience, stay curious, ask questions, live life. And I think people are getting back caught up on, you know, presenting. And stop doing that. Yeah. Try to stop doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to. Listen, it's a journey. It's yeah. a journey. Um, I think I'm curious about how we can bring um, black and queer stories to our audience and um, maybe a different way that we have in the past. Mm -hmm. I think that there's so much um, value in talking about the real lived experiences that we have and bringing in our guests and having them talk about their experiences. But I'm curious, you know, what would, you know, 
the black queer experience through the lens of surface level look like in a scripted environment um, where we're actually able to create something that maybe um, our imagination gets us excited about um, with regards to the black and queer experience. Um, We, the three of us, we have so many skills and so, so much to contribute creatively. And, you know, I'm just curious about like what, which of those uh, skill sets we can lean into to further, you know, amplify the stories and the experiences of black and queer people. Yeah. I think we, what we'll be, those beginning stages of building these this girls, like these girls behind, <laughs> behind to mind. Let me see. Bring it, bring it, bring it to the, Oh my goodness. These girls were not pretending. These girls were not pretending. <laughs> oh my goodness. The, like the baby fro. Bitch, <laughs> like my hair. <laughs> it's folded under <laughs> in this photo, and I think like the, in those we were we were fearless. We were uh, uh, so expressive. Uh, yeah, I, I think a lot about when we first started doing this and just how untethered it was. It was just a free for all. <laughs> And parts of it were ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And parts of it were like, we need to fine tune this skill set and do this more efficiently. And I, I accept all that too. But part of it, like I, I even scroll back, to like the the if you scroll very far back on our Instagram, and it gets like a lot of stuff in there. Mm-hmm. But there was just so much, just like willingness to try and like throw a bunch of shit at the wall and express yourself. And I, and I miss parts of that. Yeah. And I think it's always it's 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 almost like when people um, talk about being um a kid and like wanting to like find that freedom in youth Mm -hmm. and like that was our like freedom in like doing this creative expression it's just like how do we not do it the exact same way but how do we not lose it yes yeah 100 (laughs) percent. i mean listen season nine is definitely on the horizon we're not gonna we're not gonna make people wait for too long Mm-mm. But you, but there will be a wait. You'll get it. <laughs> when is it coming? When it's ready? That is all the time that we have this season. We like to give a special thanks to Moby, mobilizing our brothers initiative for their partnership this season, and our incredible guests for sharing their stories with us and our surface level insiders. If you enjoyed this season, let's keep the conversation going. Let us know your thoughts and questions at surfacelevelpodcast.com. And until next time, stay curious. <laughs>